Hi, I'm going to go over how to add in leaderboards or stats into your Unity game using uh, Fab APIs. So I'll log in here. And if, if you want to figure out how to do this authentication part, you can check out the other video posted above here. Like I think right there, we have the user profile tab here, the different stats that we're showing. And then we have a drop down as well, which lets you view into like the different game modes. So like if we go into like specific mode, you can see how we're drilling a little more down into specifics for that game mode itself. Uh, we have this leaderboards scene. If we come here, you can see that we have the different stats for the three game modes, or it's just kind of like the fastest time. Uh, but then we also have the another drop down here that has the all time, monthly, and daily. So you can like see those different uh, stats there. Mount. And if we just do a few game modes, we should be able to see those stats. Uh, All right, so we got a new personal daily high score. Now if we go to the high scores and see, ooh, we go to monthly, you'll see it there. If we go daily, we'll see it there. Now if we go back to profile, we'll see that now we have the, the fastest classic time. A little classic, you'll see that it shows up for all of them right now. But like as the game goes on, you'll kind of spread that out. Unless you're just amazing and you keep getting new all times. Not bad, but here you won't you won't get the high score, but you'll still get those other stats in there. So you see total games, no perfect, and so on. But so if that's something you're interested in, that's what we'll be going over uh, in this video. So we'll have timestamps description. So feel free to jump around, uh, and if you have any questions, leave a comment in the chat. Thanks. We're going to split this up into like two major parts. The one is the changes we're going to make on the developer console for PlayFab. And then the other one, we're going to go into the Unity editor and make changes as needed. So with this first part, uh, let's just jump into the My uh, Title overview for your, for your game in PlayFab and jump over to this leaderboards tab. So here is kind of where the, the stats for Clockmasters is set up, where we set up a different leaderboard for every stat that we're currently storing. So I wouldn't say every stat, just every stat that's not calculated within the game using these other ones here. For the stats that we have, like a daily, monthly, and so on high score, you can see that we set up multiple leaderboards for those. The main difference is the reset frequency, as you can see here. So you can see the manual, daily, and monthly. So that's like the, the main setup for that leaderboard section that we went over earlier. So just like a different stat for each. And then on the editor side, basically what we're going to do is set the same value for all these stats. So let's just jump in and create a new leaderboard and see what that looks like. The three main uh, properties here, you can see the, the name, which is gonna be how you reference it in your code. Let's do like a test stat for now. The reset frequency, which is based upon monthly, as you can see, like the time frame. So it just like automatically reset here. And that's why we have like the three separate ones we just went over and just have uh, PlayFab manage all that so we don't, we don't have to deal with it. For now, we're gonna leave that manual. And then for the aggregation method, this is gonna kind of be dependent on what stat you're trying to get hold of. Uh, and so like there's a use case for all of these here where it's last, um, max, or min, and so on. But uh, for now, let's just minimum here. Okay, so after that's created, you can see, you just have like a quick overview. If you wanna edit the leaderboard, you can change the recycle frequency and the aggregation method, but you can't set the name, so you'll just have to delete and re-add a new leaderboard if you want to change the name there. Okay, and just another view uh, to see the stats in the console here. You can go to the Players tab here, and you can see like the different uh, sections associated. There's this Statistics section here, where you can see like the different stats are, uh, are set. So just another view to see specific player stats if you're trying to do that. Because the leaderboard has all of them. There are alternatives for some of these stats where if we don't want to like have a leaderboard for everyone, you can come in and do like player data and so on. And there are other options, but uh, the leaderboard setup that we have here has just been the easiest to manage and uh, set up for us. Uh, with that, we can jump over to the Unity Editor. Before we jump into the code, I just want to do a brief overview so we don't get too long. But this is from the previous video I, I mentioned, uh, talking about the authentication and how that's set up. 
what we're going to do now is just kind of expand on this for what we're doing for the user stats. So to add on, we're going to have another uh, singleton here for user profile. So store the user stats we saw in that user profile the UI piece there. And then also to set the stats in the game mode. So like after you finish a game, it'll use the user profile singleton to actually set those stats. We'll link that up there. The other piece we're going to break out is this any other scene up here. So for that, we have... I would say two scenes that kind of work together. So the main menu and game scene, which both use this user profile uh, singleton over here. What this does is basically sets the user stats, like I mentioned, and then it gets and views it uh, for the user there. And then the other scene is going to be the high score scene. We separate that out. So uh, we just have like a a scene to display that grid we, we're looking at with the all time monthly and daily scores. So the, yeah, that's the main purpose of this is to get the stats. And so we have this high scores manager here, uh, which fetches the different leaderboards depending on where we're at in the UI. So we're in the Unity editor now and in the main menu scene. This is where we have like the viewing of the stats, as you can see here. Uh, we have this pop-up user profile UI. That's how we're kind of viewing it for the user. And then this is where we instantiate the user profile as well. Within here, we can edit that script here. On the script, we have the player statistics update it, event handler. So this is just a way to kind of trigger the event of when the stat gets updated from the PlayFab API. And then there's this player statistics, player statistics object that uh, we have on this user profile just so we can uh, use this object to display on the UI. We have two uh, main functions. So if we scroll down here, you'll see that we have this fetch player statistics and this update local player statistic. This fetch one is going through uh, the PlayFab client API and it's using the get player statistics uh, method they have. And so what that returns is in this uh, statistics. So it just returns an array of a key and value here. So it just returns this uh, kind of view back to uh, as in the result here. So as you can see, we, as in the result, uh, we just loop through the result stats, and for each stat, we update it on the uh, player statistics object above that we saw. And that's what this uh, function is doing down here. And you can see it just does a case based on the name that uh, we called our leaderboard on, and then sets the different objects based upon like the specific uh, value we saved on the leaderboard side. And then w once we go through that entire loop, we invoke that uh, event handler that I also mentioned above. And so at this point, we would say, like, refresh the UI. Uh, in here, if we go to the user profile UI, you can see that we have, like, the different uh, text fields associated down here. So we're going to edit that here. In the user profile UI, you can see that we're listening to this uh, event handler. So we're going to use the on player statistics update it. And then you see down here what we're doing is basically just refreshing the UI uh, based upon this. On the other side of how we're actually setting that, we'll jump over to the game scene, the scores manager. And uh, with this, if we edit the script again, then we'll look at this one. What we're doing is uh, listening to the game manager. Once the game is over, we run this end current quiz method on the quiz manager just to kind of set all the stats for the, for the user that was playing the quiz and so we're saving those to the variables and then based upon like the result of the quiz whether like the type whether or not like they'd had a perfect quiz and so on like the different stats we call this user account manager set statistic which is using the name of the leaderboard that we saw in the playfab so that's like the key driver for all these stats and then so here you can see we can jump into this set to assist there. So we can jump into this method that we have on the user account manager. And again, this is just using the PlayFab client API, update player statistics. And as you can see, the request is basically just taking in a new, uh, new list statistic update. And what we're doing is passing in the key, which we saw is the leaderboard name, and then the value, which is going to be based upon like the value you want to put in there. Okay, so for the last part in this high score scene, just to see how we're getting this leaderboard, uh, we have this high scores manager. So if we go in and edit this script, so yeah, in this uh, high scores manager, again, we're using the PlayFab client API, .get leaderboard API. And then how we're getting that is just getting the, the leaderboard again based upon the string key. So that's like the big driver for everything. 
And then based upon like the leaderboard that we chose, it's just a different uh, event handler. So we have an event handler for the classic, hard, and endless. And that's just based upon how the UI is laid out. But so after the get leaderboard is run, and this event is triggered, different leaderboard for the different game modes. So on each of those, we listen to the specific uh, event handler we just saw in that high scores manager. And then once that gets brought in, you can see down here that we're just replacing the leaderboard values. <laughs>